Hey guys, so I'm back here at the National Museum of Wildlife Art. <laughs> National Museum, wrong museum. National Museum of Military Vehicles. Um, I've taken you to that Wildlife Art Museum a few times, so it's stuck in my brain. Um, this will be the second part, I think. I'm trying to do the introductions in pieces and I'll splice them in. Um, <clears throat> But this is the outdoor setup. Everything else is inside, and it's pretty amazing. Okay, guys, so I came inside, um, and I'm going to take you through and video as much as I can. I have to wear a mask, so I'm going to be popping it on and off. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. See if they let me get away with taking it off every once in a while. But I guess the first thing to see is this gun vault. So it's kind of cool these guys built it or if that's where it came from but it's kind of a cool you can see all the mechanics behind there and the engineering with the gears and levers and stuff that you rotate and then it opens up so let's go inside the gun vault and see what they have They've got all these cool old guns. I won't pause on all of them because there's so many, but they have kind of a history of the guns in here. Go see if I can find any cool ones that are unique. Uh, you can see they have a whole wall of them in here. Here's some bigger machine guns and such. Oh. So, there's one that launches a some type of explosive. That's kind of interesting. This is Vietnam. They use these guns. This was World War II. Some type of machine gun. Looks like. Look at that crazy one there with all the handles and stuff. So it's kind of kind of interesting to see the evolution of weapons and such like that. Um, at the same time, it's kind of sad that this is the history of mankind that we have to resort to using these guns in too many circumstances. There's a big old one over here. So this was used during the Korean War. This looks like one that was set against your shoulder. World War II. So these shoulder mounted guns, you can see where your shoulders, bazookas and stuff. Um, my, my grandpa Haywood, who I grew up with, was in World War II. And then my grandpa Ashmore, who I grew up with, was in the Korean War as a Marine. So it's interesting to hear their war stories growing up. There's a lot of history in here. You'll have to come here sometime and see it, but let's get to the vehicles. Amphibious operations. You can press pause and read these. But you can kind of look down on these. So I think these were launched off of ships and then they'd have troops out in the front there machine guns on the side and they would land on the beaches with these and then some of them like this one maybe went up onto land and drove around and then others just backed, backed off the beach delivered the troops and then came back Okay, 
cargo. So again, I think I think they can use these many of these in this room on both land and water. Kind of interesting. There's a tour going on, so I'll come back to this amphibious stuff. They've got just about everything you can imagine in here, I think. Sorry, I'm probably going a little bit fast. I'll try and slow down a bit. Break this up into multiple field trips. <clears throat> Look at that little tank. I'll let you press pause and read that. I'll try and slow down more here. Break this into multiple field trips instead of rushing through. There's a little hatch for them to come in and out of. There's a gun on the front. Looks like they have not just American tanks and vehicles in here, but others as well. German and Japanese and Korean and whatever else. You can see those some type of motor cranks this drive wheel or a couple of drive wheels and then they roll they roll on these rollers, these tracks which are all metal. And these tracks have cleats on them, so as they get cranked around, they dig into the ground and push the tank forward. But the thought was that these would protect the soldiers much better. Unless they got blown up. Another tank guy up in the top turret be kind of a scary job <laughs> there's a famous Jeep this style of Jeep and variations on it came out of World War II my wife's grandpa here in Wyoming has had bought one after the wars and then gave it to um, my wife's brother who has it now done a lot of work on it. You can press pause and read that. Wish I could get up on top and look down into these things a little bit better. There's a replica of a guy in there. It's kind of cool that they have these people in there. I don't know if I zoomed in on this, but you can press pause and read that. tank medium tank giant you can press pause and read that and then they have some specifications too you can press pause and read that Somebody doing some work on this thing. This is a half track. It's got some type of big roller on the front. I don't know if that's for this little thing, probably tells us what it's for. Maybe it's for spooling wire or something. I don't know. But it's got the track on the back. Gun up in the middle. It looks like it's a transport. So you sit a bunch of troops in there, and you can read this. You can press pause and read that. And you can press pause and read that. It's a Jeep. 
it's also a transport of some kind. some transportable guns. I guess they'd mount on those towing mechanisms and then they'd have this it's a anti-tank gun of some kind. Let me see it's sticking out here. It's pretty big. You can press pause and read that. Shoots 15 rounds per minute. That's kind of crazy. Right out of the barrel there. Here's a cool looking vehicle. It says this is an Italian heavy tractor. You can press pause and read that. So, looks like 1938 just before World War II. Maybe they used it during the war. It's kind of crazy looking. So, one of the uh, interesting things about this building is that um, it just opened this summer um, and I believe it's all privately funded so by one man somebody named Mr. Stark which is kind of interesting because that's the character name from Iron Man but he's uh I think he lives here and set all this up I might be repeating this so. uh, reconnaissance vehicles cool interesting style and design and paint on it so it's a Canadian model it's called a car otter Okay, in this big old room, they have just tons of vehicles parked in here. So I'm just gonna wander through and show you what I can. Again, I'm, I'm a little worried I'm, you're bored with all of these. So <laughs> hopefully it's not too boring. Put my mask back on. So look at this big old giant thing. I think this is a bridge. So I think this pulls up and then this flips out and expands and they can push it out and then it creates a giant bridge so that that's a scissor that opens up and then sets down flat and then they can get over creeks and streams with vehicles so be a cool vehicle to drive this had a huge hydraulic that lifted up and set it down it's pretty awesome More tanks. There's a helicopter. That's pretty cool. Look at these giant blades sticking way out here. So you can they can look down through the flooring from their seat. See below them. There's their instrument panels. above there's the landing skids they can get people in and out they can put chairs in place or take them out or guys could sit here and shoot out whatever they needed to there's 
There's the rotor. I think that's the rotor. Navy. And they have the back blades that spin to keep it from just flipping around. It's a long outfit. And then tons and tons of vehicles back in here. You can see. I'll go try and find some cool ones. <laughs> 